As the IPCC sends the world a dire warning that it's now or never to reduce emissions, it's also provided a rare bright spot, the promise of carbon capture technology. Converting CO2 was once a fringe idea, but it's grown to be one of the key tools in fighting climate change. But what is it? Well, joining me now is Howard Herzog from MIT in Boston. And Howard, you are a pioneer in this field. Can you explain how carbon capture and storage works? Okay, so the idea of carbon capture and storage is to mitigate CO2 emissions, basically lessen the amount we put into the atmosphere. Uh, unlike some of the other uh, mitigation technologies. Uh, in this case, we still use fossil fuels or sometimes biomass, but instead of letting the carbon dioxide go up the smokestack, we capture it from the exhaust gases, and then we put it in pipes and put take it to pure storage locations, which is generally underground geologic formations. And Howard, how is it stored underground? How does that work? How the storage works? So. Yeah. Basically, it's it's about it's a simple explanation is the opposite of taking uh, oil and gas out of the ground. Instead of you know you have wells and you have wells going down to reservoirs, and for take oil and gas out of the ground, uh, we take the oil and gas out of those reservoirs. Uh, in this case, we're putting CO2 down in the ground into the similar reservoirs we take oil and gas out of. Fascinating, and and carbon capture is already being used in coal fire, uh, fired power plants. Well, that was the original intention, uh, but it's gone beyond that, and, and there's been uh, carbon capture facilities on industrial plants, uh, such as cement and iron and steel, uh, for hydrogen production, so you can have uh, basically carbon-free uh, hydrogen, and now it's also been extended to what they call carbon dioxide removal, where you try to take it out of the air. Um, and, and put it in the ground that way. So it, it's very much expanded over the last 20 or 30 years from the original intention of putting it on coal fire power plants. And there's a lot of interest and excitement about pulling carbon out of the air, but it's not that straightforward, is it? So um, there's multiple ways to take CO2 out of the air. Some are biological. Uh, what they call direct air capture uses similar technology that we take the CO2 out of the smokestacks and apply it to the air. However, it's much more difficult because the CO2 is so diluted in the air by a factor of about 300 compared to a coal fire plant exhaust. And that creates problems uh, in terms of capturing it, in terms of the big, you know, big uh, machines to capture from the air because we have to process so much air. And also it, it takes a lot more energy to take the CO2 out of the air than it does out of the smokestack of a power plant. So, so that is still an emerging technology, but carbon capture overall has a really key role to play in fighting climate change, doesn't it? So, I mean, I, I see uh, multiple uses of it. Um, it's... Uh, uh, what's I going to say, if we're going to get to net zero, I think it's going to be very hard to get to net zero uh, without it. I think you need every technology you can, and maybe even more some. Uh, no technology is a silver bullet. Uh, there's going to be a lot of technology doing 10, 20, maybe 30% of the solution. And carbon capture will be one of it. And as I say, it's going to be in several parts of the economy but this is not a get out of jail free card, is it? Reducing emissions is still paramount. No, not at all. It's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, what did I say? There, there's uh, a whole range of technologies. Uh, some are cheaper, uh, so we'll do those first. But uh, I think if you're going to get to net zero, you're going to have to decarbonize some parts of the economy that are very hard to decarbonize. And uh, that's uh, an area that carbon capture uh, can do very well. Howard Herzog, thank you. Okay, bye-bye.